because you know in Detroit everybody feel like a celebrity can't nobody <laughs> talk to them can't nobody touch them yeah, you know sure. but I really want to kind of break that barrier a little bit and show like it's a lot of cool people in the city mm, damn Q baby you did that what up what up what up man it's your boy Shy Shy versus everybody podcast voice of Detroit motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker man What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy, Shy vs. Everybody Podcast, episode 183. Got a special guest in the building, you know what I'm saying? I know I say it a lot, but I think she's special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she got a couple of hats, too. Uh, you uh, a, um, a chef, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Cooking, uh, you're owner of a uh, fire-ass vegan. Mm -hmm. She used to be a hairstylist back in the day. Mm -hmm. You still do her hair? No, I do not do it. <laughs> no. I just found out she a podcast host. Mm -hmm. uh, med uh, meditation coach. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We got Daisy Johnson in the building. Yay. Hey How you guys. feel? I'm feeling great, actually. It was hard to, uh, to like, I'm like, dang, what? I don't know anything. I don't even know your name. I just knew Fire Ass Vegan. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Once I looked on your page and started seeing your name was Daisy Johnson, I started doing a little stuff. And yes, stuff. You know yes. what I'm saying? How you doing this, uh, this fine, what's today? What's today? Friday? Friday. Yeah. yeah. How you doing? I'm feeling good, actually. I'm feeling real. Honestly, anxious, like, ready for this year to be over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ready for the new year. For sure, for sure. We're going to definitely get into that. But before we start off everything, we start off the show with a salute me while I'm here. Okay. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we can give them their flowers. Mm -hmm. You know, we made that long Facebook caption about how we love him and her. Mm -hmm. And we didn't tell them that when they was, you know what I'm saying, right here to get the love. Right. So, but it can't be anybody in your immediate circle. When I say immediate circle, I'm talking about parents. Okay. It can't be if you got a, I don't know if you got a relationship. Okay. It got to be somebody out of that circle. So, you okay. got somebody you want to shoot some love to? Um, I want to shoot some love to Damn, nobody in my immediate circle. Okay. <laughs> you have no moms. It's easy. Hey, mom, I love you. Um, <laughs> right. I want to shoot some love to Dang. Uh, I'm going to say her name is Destiny. Mm -hmm. um, she's a really, really nice person. She does. She helped me with one of my events, like one of my meditation events. Mm -hmm. um, so she does like her own meditation. She's really into healing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know she's been very strong with like her mom mm -hmm. and going through certain things. So I okay. want to shoot some love to her. Shout out to her. So Destiny. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Destiny. What's up, Destiny? How you doing? Keep doing a good job. <laughs> uh, I ain't got nobody in particular. I want to salute. I want to salute the women that I had on the show this year. Uh, I, I come to realize I, I don't know if, if my producer Q probably pay attention, but it's like the women that came on the show is are are more productive than the guys. Mm. When I say productive, it's like when they do music, they are constantly like dropping music, doing shows, promotion, and it's like the guys on the show who, who who's into the same stuff don't really advertise as much. Mm. They hey, I got a project dropping on Friday. Friday get here is is here, and then it's like that's it. Mm. <laughs> it's like it's like they not on their on their game like the women. I don't know. I think. Cause women, you know, f coming from mothers and and stuff like that, and grandmothers, like they be on their stuff. Yeah. Guys kind of like chill and just expect stuff. Well, girls, like females, they mature faster. Mm -hmm. So I think that has a lot to do with it. And then just like it's harder for women in any industry. So mm -hmm. I feel like we have to work harder. Like we mm -hmm. have to be on our stuff. We got to be more consistent. We got to be more disciplined um, to get the respect in whatever field we we are sure. in. Whether you're attractive or not like you have to be on your stuff no yeah. for sure for sure yeah. do you now you being a cook and stuff like that and having a, a restaurant do you face like any problems when it comes to like guys trying to you know maybe use stuff to try to get on like hey are you cook hey yes how absolutely. you doing <laughs> absolutely and i find myself constantly like um redirecting conversations mm -hmm. to be about okay what is it that you need you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying yeah for sure um, <laughs> So it's like my main thing, I'm not really in it for money. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about clout. I really just want respect in my field because I put a lot in with what I do. Mm -hmm. So I do get a lot of that. I do. And I mean, I'm, I am like to say that I'm attractive, you mm -hmm. know, so I think that um, it is hard. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it is what it is. Not I, for sure. I, don't, I don't regret anything. Yeah. Like it it got to be tough being like, like you said, being an attractive young lady and mm -hmm. just doing anything because, mm -hmm. you know, a guy's going to be on you. Like, mm -hmm. No matter what, you can't escape it in person, on social media. Yeah. They in your face. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, you cook? Oh, oh right. you wanna come, come over and cook? Like, you know, just right, laying right. stuff like that. <laughs> well, what ha what helped me is, so <laughs> actually, I used to be like 300 pounds, right? Okay. 
Um, I wasn't always super big, but um, I had entered a period in my life where I gained a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed that a lot of the guys that were polite to me when I went to the store or um, just trying to talk to me or see how I was doing, that kind of dissipated. Mm -hmm. And so that made me look at things differently. Like, you know, when a guy in my face now, I'm like, okay, but if I gained 300 pounds or if I was depressed mm -hmm. or anything, you wouldn't be on that tip. So yeah. it really makes me look at it different. It don't sure. really phase me. Now you say, th huh, you, 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 I can't see you being like, you know, saying no 300 pounds. Like, mm -hmm. I'm I not trying show to show you a picture afterwards. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. yeah, we hope it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, how, how did it happen? Like, you say you wasn't started off, you know, say the, the weight came. Like, mm -hmm. was you depressed? Like, was it, or you just like, it was an accumulation of things. So mm -hmm. I dealt with something called PCOS, which okay. is like um, cysts on your ovaries. And it came from really just um, drinking a lot of dairy, mm -hmm. um, dairy products. So I would eat cereal like five times a day. Mm -hmm. And I didn't gain <laughs> weight, but until like I started dealing with stuff from the dairy. Yeah. Um, and then mental health issues. So okay. I dealt with some pushback from my family, um, just being authentic and just being kind of different from mm. who they are. Mm. And it kind of sent me into like a downward spiral mentally. I dealt with like sex sexual assault. Mm. Um, I was the first person in my family to go to like a major university. Okay. And I just wasn't embraced how I felt like I should have been. Mm. And it just caused me to honestly mistreat myself. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of project that onto myself. And so, um, I was hospitalized for mm -hmm. a couple of months on end. Mm -hmm. Um, the medicines that they were giving me made me gain so much weight. So yeah. it was an accumulation of things, but yeah, I was definitely yeah. like 300 pounds. So how did you deal with that? Like getting back on track? Because once you, you know, gain that weight, it's hard to, mm -hmm. it's hard to get back and right mentally and be like, all right, I'm gonna get to the gym. I'm gonna work out. I'm gonna mm -hmm. get in shape. Like, how did you get back right as far as like, you know, saying your weight and your mental? Um, well, I started with. When I was in the, the hospital and stuff, I got really discouraged. But then I did an outpatient program. Okay. Um, so where it was like they would pick us up. We would go almost like school. We would mm. go for like eight hours a day. They fed us. We did activities. Um, and it was mainly like group therapy center. Okay. So that helped me more than anything. Like more than talking to one psychiatrist or one therapist. Like mm. being around a group of people like myself who mm. just, I mean, it was doctors in there. It was uh, lawyers, moms, um, kids, like all in there. And we all were just going through a tough time mentally and we got to kick it. And mm. I would tell them stuff and they would be like, Oh hell no. Like I wouldn't deal with that. Yeah. Woo -woo. And that gave me some strength, more strength than a therapist saying, Oh, it's going to be okay. Woo -woo. Mm. Um, so that started helping things. Okay. And then, um, I did start getting into the gym and start caring about my health more, but it wasn't until I was like, you know, what? I, I need to love myself the way I am. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, it's almost like the weight disappeared. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't, he wasn't too concerned about it. He wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I wasn't like, okay, I got to get 20 pounds off. I got to, no, I was just like, you think, I love myself. You think that's the problem when people are losing weight? They just, they, they got a goal in mind as far as like a set weight. I got to lose, I lose Absolutely. 20 within 30 days or this, that, and the third. Like, Absolutely. Because I tell people all the time, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Like, if you don't change your actual lifestyle, mm -hmm. then you're going to be chasing this 20 pounds lighter forever. No, like, for sure. you're always going to be like, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. If you just change your lifestyle, you're just going to be healthy. Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. Dang, I, I wasn't expecting to start like this. You see? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, we gonna get. I want to get into that whole lifestyle and, and, the, and the vegan stuff like that later mm -hmm. on. But you did bring up something uh, being sexual, sexual assaulted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I coach kids young kids girls and boys nice. and um you've seen a lot of stuff like on the news as far as like these coaches like mm -hmm. messing around with these kids and stuff like mm -hmm. that and i even asked my wife like should i bring this stuff up to like my girls or should i just let the parents do it because mm -hmm. like you i tell them i got a girl on the team who came and practice one time with some shorts that was too small like mm -hmm. hella small like mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what i'm saying she's not a little girl so i'm like hey you can't come and practice you know say with those shorts right and he said why i'm like because if i'm your father and i walk into the practice and see a male coach I'm cussing him out for not telling you what I just told you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So just speak on that. And did you like, did you know you, it was happening or was it something that you discovered once you got older? Um, I mean, as if you want to speak on it. If not, then no, we could just. I don't have a problem. So me actually being sexually assaulted, like the act of that was when I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, I did try to like not say nothing about it, mm -hmm. but it bothered me so much. It happened like on a Friday. Okay. And so um, I had to go back to school Monday. And so I tried to just kind of act like, you know, because it was by my um, my grandmother's cousin. who's okay. like, at the time, probably like almost 50 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so 
I tried to not say nothing about it, but then, like, I journaled about it, mm-hmm. and I was like, I went to school Monday, and I just couldn't, like, act Can't like everything was okay, so I slipped it in the envelope and then, like, passed it in to my teacher with my homework. Okay. And so, they caught me out of class, and they were like, okay, we actually legally have to say something. You gotta like, do something, yeah. 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 So, that turned into a whole drawn-out case where I had to go be pulled out of school multiple times to, like, testify against him and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out, he wasn't even supposed to be around kids in the first place. Oh, man. So, that led to a little bit of sidetracked um, resentment towards my family, because I'm like, why? Yeah, if y'all know this, then yeah. yeah. Um, and then, just like... Another instance that I won't go into yet, just because I'm still working on some no, healing from it. But um, it really just like I said something because I couldn't live with it. Mm-hmm. I know there are a lot of people who do keep it mm-hmm. in bottled in, but me personally, I just can't. Like when it's something on my mind, yeah. even people close to me, even if it's something small, they like, "What's wrong?" With Gotta you? let it go. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, I ask that because, like I said, a lot. Of, you know, you never know who watching who might need to hear this because mm-hmm. I know Coco. Um, shout out, shout out to Coco. You know, everybody know comedian Coco. Mm-hmm. She was saying like it's certain sexual acts that she can't perform with guys due to stuff that happened to her when she was mm. younger so it's like you can't hold me you can't hold me down a certain way you can't touch me a certain way because of that and that, that can really mess you up in the, you know what I'm saying in the long run you Absolutely. know what I'm saying I will say that I had to address certain things in therapy because of my relationship mm. it was certain things um, that I it was kind of like the opposite for mm. me like I kind of embraced certain things okay. just because of like it developed a weird fetish for certain things mm. until I healed. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's different. Everybody's super, super different. Mm-hmm. And it's just about like going within yourself and realizing why you like stuff and yeah. why you don't like stuff for well, sure. Yeah. I'm, and I'm glad you said something because you never know what could have let, you know what I'm saying? It could have kept happening, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He could have thought, you know what I'm saying? Hey, uh, she ain't going to say nothing. I can continue on doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Hey. Absolutely. And shout out to my grandfather because, I mean, he's not alive. He's not with us no more. But yeah. um, my grandfather, as soon as my dad called from my school mm-hmm. uh, my grandfather got in the car with his gun and was like looking for this dude like <laughs> no for sure yeah. no BS we Man. could not find him he was like no nah, I'll talk to y'all later I'm looking for him right now like yeah. he wasn't about to talk in no no for yeah. sure yeah I couldn't imagine <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but you guys like I said you gotta be careful who you have your kids around mm-hmm. that's even when it comes to boyfriend girlfriends if mm-hmm. you you know what I'm saying not with the you know kid mother or father and stuff like that you just gotta be careful mm-hmm. you gotta be careful who these coaches are out here these teachers like mm-hmm. Because these dudes be sick in the head. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And they just, maybe it's something that happened to them when they was younger. Right. That got them thinking it's okay and continue on the whole, I ain't going to say tradition, but continue the hurt. Yeah, like for real. So, I mean, I always say, and the reason I don't have kids yet is just because of those things I'm cautious of. So, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I honestly don't want to have kids until literally I don't have to pay nobody to watch my kids. Mm -hmm. Like, I damn near want to be able to homeschool them just because I'm so paranoid. Yeah, that's scary too. My daughter's in daycare, but thank God that we found like, just the right family like mm-hmm. as a mother daughter they even had a daycare for a long time and stuff like that we knew the uh brother because he worked with me as far as like basketball and stuff like that so nice. this is a close-knit daycare and it's some because that's that's hard like to find daycare is hard mm-hmm. i remember one uh lady <laughs> she we, we went to her house to check her out and the daycare looked like a regular crib like really? she was in mother smoking cigarettes i'm like that oh. so will she hold my baby and try to put a cigarette <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and it's just like, cause I I remember they said if you have a daycare, your daycare gotta have its own interest. It can't mm-hmm. be the same interest as everybody that walk in. Mm-hmm. And we all walking through a door like it's like my grandma crib and oh, stuff. No. Like I'm like, dang, I could just imagine her. And she said that the kids gotta come with her when she dropped off her her kids to school. Like really? no, no, not I pass on this though. Yeah. <laughs> I will say like. I do feel a little bit more comfortable and lean into it because nowadays, like, it's daycares where you can literally log into an app and mm-hmm. see your kids at any time. Oh, yeah, time. for sure, like, for sure, for sure. I like stuff like that. That's my granddad up there. He loud them up if y'all hear something upstairs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all heard the story about the one lady that's in jail right now for shooting her husband for assaulting the kids in the day- a kid in the daycare. Mm. And she in jail for, what, four or five years? And they trying to get justice for, for her because, like, why are you in jail for defending these kids, yeah. like you know, what I'm saying and he he out on pro, uh, waiting waiting trial. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, man. Yeah, I don't mm. got no love for that, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But uh, yeah, I wasn't planning on starting like that, but you know, it was a good conversation, real quick. Absolutely. But uh, you had said you ready for this year to be over with. Mm-hmm. Just talk about this year and like the ups and downs of the year and stuff like that. This year, um. It actually was a great year. Mm -hmm. It went by really, really, really fast, but it was a great year. Mm -hmm. This year um, pulled me out of my comfort zone as far as business, as far as 
forgiveness, mm-hmm. um, just being an overall good person. So this year I got the privilege of being a private chef for Erica Badu. Oh damn! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Uh, <laughs> you should brought like, me with you. <laughs> you know, like that was great. Yeah. And then um, I had we had a couple of celebrities come in because. So, Fire as Vegan is inside of Fresh Roots, mm-hmm. which is a smoothie, juice shop, all things health. Okay. Um, and then we just handle, like, the food and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, we had, like, NLE Chopper come in. Yeah. We had just so many different um, nice faces. And then, so, it was nice because I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with All Deaf Digital, like, mm-hmm. on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, Tony Baker came in. Yeah. Um, Brand, I think his name is Brandon, um, and then uh, another comedian, Marcus, he came in. Okay. So it was like, yeah. it was it was nice because these are the people that I look mm-hmm. to. You know, it wasn't just like random celebrities or anything like that. And then um, expansion. So mm-hmm. I went from just being, doing pop-ups at Fresh Roots to mm-hmm. being there pretty much yeah, all the time. Yeah, like permanent, you can walk yeah. in anytime and get some of my food. For so sure, for sure. Great. So it's not like, do you have, you, you, do you have like an actual like, store in there or just like... Um, I just... mean, we sh- we share, I guess, the store. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, it would be like a, what we say, like Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins. Okay, like, okay, okay. you go okay, in yep. there, you ask for a donut, you're going to get a donut. But you ask for some ice cream, you're going to get some ice for cream. Sure, for yeah. sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Now, what was like some, um, because, oh, go back to Erica Badu. How was she when you, <laughs> like, meet her? Like, was like, did you get to, you know, speak to her or whatever? Um, I did briefly, but... Yeah. The experience itself, mm. if we being for real, I'm still realizing that it happened. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> I mean, because from the beginning, like I had bought, so I had bought my mom tickets to go see Erica Badu when she came in July. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my brother, mm. and so the the day before the concert, mm. she called. I was like literally in the kitchen, like yeah. cooking. And normally I don't answer the phone like if I'm in the kitchen or if we're closed already. Mm-hmm. I kind of just whatever they need. Woo woo. The guys like answer the phone, yeah, girl. <laughs> like answer the phone. So I'm like, okay. I answered the phone, and it was her sister, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Hi, can I speak to the owner of Fire Arts Vegan?" I'm like, "Yeah," mm-hmm. and I put it on speaker, and I literally like told my brother like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah. We just bought the tickets, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and. <laughs> She was like, I heard so many good things about you, mm. and we'll be in town tomorrow morning. Yeah. She's like, Erica Badu, uh, she'll be in town for a couple of days. She wants three meals a day. Okay. Um, Start telling me what she like. And she was Dang. like, you're a beautiful girl. We saw your website. Yeah. And, all stuff. and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> Messed like up. the whole time I was like, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't get it. And I immediately, I immediately called for team with my business partner. Yeah. Like, yeah. And she was just like, what? Shut the fuck up. Like, you lying. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, for real. Like, it was just crazy. And I was surprising my mom with mm-hmm. the tickets. So, but I had to tell her. I yeah, was like, like yeah, no. So, yeah. Like, I, was about to, I was like, look. So, I was, you want to know what your surprise was going to be? And yeah. I told her. And she was like, what? What do you mean, was? Like, mm-hmm. what happened? And I told her. And she was like, oh, my God. Man, it's crazy. So, dope. yeah. That's but the dope. whole experience was crazy. Like, I mean, the whole three days that I was. So, the um, whole three days, it was food from you. Absolutely. Okay. Like, and I just invoiced them daily. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, every time they text me, like, okay, she wants this. Like, yeah. they would tell me to send them a menu. And they would just pick stuff off the menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For sure. Yeah. How, how was that tip? <laughs> the tip, look, the tip was amazing, and we got and we got all access passes to her oh, show, shit. so we yeah, was back dope. all access, yeah. not just backstage passes, like all access. So we your mom got, got to everything. got to meet her. Absolutely. Not only did you buy tickets, now your mom get to meet her. Oh, that's dope. You should have seen my mama. Like she really was walking through the uh, <laughs> stuff. Like it was her. Like she was the chef. Yeah. I'm like, can you hold up? Can you wait for me? Man, she like that's dope because she just seemed like one of those people like that you just have to meet. Yeah. Like she's like she down to earth, like just like the home girl, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Just, I was say if i could use one word to describe her presence the people around her i would say just magical i think yeah. it's like ethereal i think that's the word yeah, for but sure. just like out of this world like that's what i'm saying i'm still in the days yeah. like i don't even yeah my wife had to just chill i had to give her a hug like hey i gotta get this hug like yeah. it's everything i do like <laughs> like hey you can be me all you want to uh- <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's all good though that's what's up hey hey so did you like have any uh any down down parts of the year, like any time of the year that you was kind of like frustrated with business or with life in general? Um, I'm pretty sure I have. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, getting becoming so switching over from like okay, 
this is my this is my side hustle, whatever, mm. and really becoming a legitimate legal wholesaling business. Mm. That was, I would say, the toughest thing for me. Mm. Like, it, it really put things in perspective. Like, okay, this is what I'm choosing to do. This ain't no just, oh, it's easy to mm. make vegan food because it's popping. No, like, it took money. It took time. It effort, was, yeah. I mean, I was up for days. I was so paranoid. I was just mm. so, like... Okay, what if I don't pass my exam, my inspections, mm. um, looking for a kitchen? So, like, um, in Michigan, I can say there you have to, like, be in a commercial licensed kitchen, mm. which costs money. And then mm. the license itself costs money. The inspection costs money. Mm. You have to... Um, there's not really too many resources on exactly, you know, what you got to have. So, I mean calling around yeah. i do have a mentor through the um score mentorship program mm. and even they didn't know some of the questions so yeah. honestly that was like the most frustrating part of my year yeah, like yeah, yeah. it was but it was very rewarding yo, yo, yeah i see you and your partner for team of y'all was on channel four news and stuff like that yeah like talk about how was that um, that was really, really great. I'm gonna say Fatima is a superstar, so yeah. I just <laughs> be learning from her. Yeah. Um and it's just I I'm really grateful to be able to kind of like watch that mm. you know because not so many people that i know of um especially like even celebrities or whatever that get in the spotlight ha got to see stuff mm. before you know they got in the spotlight yeah, yeah, so yeah, i'm yeah. really grateful to kind of be following her lead and like see everything yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm an observer anyway so mm. like that's it's, yeah. it's i'm just really grateful it's yeah. a grateful experience. now for sure it's always good to see somebody that's, that's doing something that you're doing that you can be oh, all right mm -hmm. man i got somebody that i'm close with that i can go ahead and see how they're handling it Absolutely. so it's easy for me it's like this guy he do a podcast and i've been i went out with this dude one time I'm like damn everybody know q mm -hmm. i was kind of i was kind of like a little jealous like right. <laughs> well q with a big fella i mean right. i'm like <laughs> right <laughs> chilling in the cut like yeah but no it's always dope to have somebody next to you that can kind of like give you some you know some pointers and let you know when you're messing up doing good and stuff like that absolutely because like she's a superstar too so like yeah no matter where we go whatever like people know her and you know like people who maybe i listen to on a radio or mm. whatever and so it's just i don't know it's like really inspiring it's again another experience where i feel like i'd be like dang like i'm really yeah. here no for know? sure yeah, yeah yeah now what's the plan for next year you want to get out this year What's the plans for this year? Like, what, what's the vision for you next year, small or or big? Um, vision for me next year, becoming more of a household name for sure. Mm. Um, and definitely, I say doing a little, doing more media. Like, I just want to show people that, you know, regular people, I guess, or just, um, you know, different people, awkward people, weird people. Mm. They're some of the best creatives, oh, for sure. you know, yeah. and really, really cool people to be around, mm. you know. And I just want to share more about, like, um or share more of the vision of everybody because you know in detroit everybody feel like a celebrity can't nobody <laughs> talk to them can't nobody touch them yeah, you know sure. but i really want to kind of break that barrier a little bit and show like it's a lot of cool people in the city no you it know? is and yeah. it's a lot of us that want to share yeah. things and want to work together and collab it's like cool people in the city that, that's outside of music and and and, and mm -hmm. movies too mm -hmm. because when you you think about detroit oh hey, they do music that's why I, this podcast i wanted to make sure i touch on everything not just rappers and singers like mm -hmm. business owners like mm -hmm. this different things so i won't be having like the same type of interview the same type of show every time for real so it's cool just to anybody got something going on like it's cool to talk to them absolutely yeah if, if you had to give this year a movie title what would it be <laughs> um rush hour <laughs> <laughs> everything's moving fast huh yeah rush hour that and just like i feel like i feel like i'm chris tucker and fatima <laughs> is lee sometimes like because um like we just tackle we just be tackling stuff yeah. and we do it in a funny way for sure. you know where we joke we laugh we cry a little bit whatever we mm. don't see eye to eye all the times but it's That's never no right. beef yeah. or nothing you know um we bring a lot of comedy to what we do i feel like yeah. so you gotta have fun you gotta have yeah. fun everything can be all serious like you right. gotta have fun you gotta and have we fun tackle obstacles and all of that stuff but okay. it's just like you know have some fun now, yeah. now our last thing i want to ask about about years like give me a year that you will always remember no matter if like a good year a bad year like you just like that that year <laughs> stands out 2016 oh you you was on it quick <laughs> 2016 yeah um 2016 i feel like was a great year for music mm -hmm. um a lot a lot a lot of great music came out of 2016 but for me it was like 
It was the year after I graduated high school. Damn mo. Uh, <laughs> you graduated twenty fifteen? Yeah, twenty fifteen. <laughs> she graduated eleven years after me. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I mean that was my first year for real, for real out in the world. I was for making sure. great money for a nineteen year old. Yeah. Like great money. I was working all the time. Um, however, I was I was doing a lot of horrible things, mm -hmm. um, but I don't regret nothing at oh, all. Sure, it just yeah. taught me a lot of like what I don't need to be doing and why I don't need to be doing. For sure, yeah. for sure, for sure, for sure. Dang, yeah, that was that. She went right on in twenty sixteen. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> so my job, it was a bad year. Twenty eighteen was tough. Yeah, man, it was tough. I remember Christmas Day. I was always I was crying in bed like, ah. Really? Why well, was it was just a tough like just jobs like money, mm -hmm. um, trying to make sure you got everything in order for your family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it just it was just it was tough. Yeah, I remember one time just laying in bed like, Duh, how am I going to even get through this? But you get through it. Yeah, like I remember that was a Christmas shout out to my uh, father in law. I was I was unable to buy my kids something for Christmas. Mm. And he's like, hey, man, I'm going to buy this stuff. Just pay me back. I paid him back that, you know what I'm saying, the following year. I remember he, uh, my son went to PlayStation 4 before the 5 came out. Mm -hmm. And my, he bought, he just bought some stuff. He waited till the day before Christmas to give it to me. But uh, <laughs> I was thankful, though. Yeah. But that, that was a tough year. That year and 2012, that's when my mom passed away. Okay. But I want to say it was a bad year mm -hmm. because it was, a, it was a year of growth. I felt like because when she passed, it's like, okay, everything is on you now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got nobody you can fall back on. Yeah. And I moved to Texas. So it was like just, just I grew up. It was a, it was messed up, but it helped me grow up. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just started, you know, just taking charge of my life. Absolutely. Yeah. I think those years are most important because they're the most transformative. So, mm -hmm. like, for me, 2018 was the year that I was um, in and out the hospital all year. Mm -hmm. Um Although it had a major impact on my life and why I do the things that I do, mm. I just feel like um, 2016 was just a little bit more, like, yeah. eye-opening. For sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. Yeah, you always got that one year, like, yeah, that was the year right yeah. there, boy. Yeah. 2020, though, even though 2020 was bad, we was getting money out here in 2020. No, for real. <laughs> and it was like, you was just being creative, mm -hmm. like, in your ways of hanging out and doing stuff, things mm -hmm. closed, like, you just had to experience, like... It was that was a good year. That was the year I found out I was having my first daughter. Nice. And because we was done, like after that, that third kid was like, all right, whatever it is, we are done. Mm -hmm. So we had our daughter. I got married. It just things was coming out. Beautiful. You know, what I'm saying the podcast was popping off. So it was like, yeah, it was a good year. Twenty twenty was a good year. Like I'm not gonna lie, the pandemic, like <laughs> that that was my. I'm and I'm an introvert, so I was like, I'm glad I can go somewhere and sure. everybody got to stay low. the fuck away. Like <laughs> yeah. I that, loved it. Did you get COVID? I did. Okay, how was that? Like, was you? Did you get the real COVID or like the? the no, I got COVID. Like, <laughs> I got COVID. I thought I was gonna die. Like, Man. and I don't even have no health problems, but I felt like I was going to die. I remember laying on my couch and being like, "God, please, if I'm about to die, just like please forgive me real quick yeah. for everything." Yeah. Cause like, you know, I I swear I couldn't breathe yeah. nothing, and then I kept calling the the hospital. And it was like, ma'am, you're going to be fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. just stop calling us. For the sure. ambulance had to keep coming out. Because I'm like, as long as they don't take me to the hospital, they're not going to charge me. Yeah, for so sure. So, they knew me on the first name basis. Like, Deja, what's up? Man? No, literally. And it was like, okay, just smoke a blunt. Because at this point, you just have yeah. an anxiety yeah. attacks. They literally told me to smoke a blunt. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, bro. Like, you give me some smoking weed vibes. Yeah. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, what you, does that even mean? I don't know. Just, you get, I don't know. Look. Like, not bad look. It's just like, you know, you can kind of tell somebody, like, it ain't bad. Like, you got some people who smoke weed and look bad. Like, yeah. got them lips blacker than got them eyes right. like <laughs> Well, I don't smoke tobacco. So, okay. um, A, I don't smoke nearly as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. And I think that just come from, A, being, just doing business. Like, I don't have time to, to be, be high all the time. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also, like, a, I don't smoke tobacco. So, when I do smoke, I do either papers or hemp wrap, something yeah, yeah. like that. My brother, so, yeah. Yeah, my brother, he, he, he real big in the cannabis. And he was saying, like, how it's not good for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, he, 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 real, he really into that. He had a, uh, a cannabis podcast. Hey, you got to come back, man. Come back on, come on back. It's nice. called uh, The Classic Pothead. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I can't smoke. I tried it. It's, it's, a, it's a bad thing. Okay. Like 2020, I had edible and I just knew I was gonna die. Oh, edibles! I never done edibles. <laughs> yeah, no, um, no. Nope. I mean, I have done them, but I'm saying I never liked them because yeah, uh -uh. it's a whole different feeling for sure. It took but... 24 hours to 
to just feel regular. Yeah. Like my son at the time was four, and I just he was scaring me. <laughs> like he would jump, and I'm like, what is he doing? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I told my other son, like, hey, can you watch him? He's like, where you going? I'm like, nowhere. Just get him away right. from me. <laughs> It, like he was Chucky, like I was so scared, man. Yeah, no, nah, edibles is different for sure. It's like my sure. pinky toe was high. Really? That's how bad it was. Oh my! I called God. him and my brother like in tears. Like man, I'm about to make a Facebook status, like, cause my thing is I never knock on wood. I don't want to leave this earth anytime soon. But my fear is leaving this earth with a stupid Facebook status. Okay. <laughs> okay. So like, so I wanted to go in there and just tell you about I love him, cause mm-hmm. I thought it was over. Like, hey, I love y'all. Off the edible though, yes, that's yes. crazy. That's how bad it was. Could I remember I was so high <laughs> off edible, I was scared to go to sleep because I was like, it's I over. think I'm too high to yes. remember to breathe. Yes. Like, that's how it was. Yeah, like, I was go- I was holding to my wife's legs like this the uh. whole time, I'm just paranoid. I just felt like blood was rushing from my head to my oh neck. Oh my goodness, it was a bad feeling, man. I don't know how people do that, but if you can do it, salute to you. Yeah, like no but for real. but yeah, like Facebook. Now, like God rest everybody's soul who passed away. But for some reason, when people post like, mm-hmm. oh, rest in peace to such and such, mm-hmm. I go on their Facebook page, right? And then you see that last status, it's like, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, you don't know it's over, but it's kind of bad when you say, fuck hoes, get money, and then you just. And then, yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, <laughs> no, for real. Like, damn. <laughs> like, this, this one's on your mind, huh? Like, <laughs> first off, as a grown adult, like, you shouldn't even make those type of statuses anyway. Yeah. But that's the last one you got? Hey. It is what Rest it in is. Peace. Right. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, but I'm more into. I mean, I do, like I said, I do smoke, but I'm more into um, psychedelics, actually. Okay. Psychedelics okay. actually really changed my life, and mm-hmm. then some people around me, like, changed their life. So, that, that that goes to the whole medication side, I mean, medication, meditation side of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, it's like, talk about that, because me and him was speaking on that whole meditation, like, I don't know how. Mm-hmm. Like, just talk to me about meditation, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you even do it, like? I know it might sound crazy, but no, it's not. It's not crazy at all. Most mm-hmm. people don't know. A again, I look at everything like a lifestyle mm-hmm. that came from me studying meditation. Okay. Um. So meditation is really another term for awareness. Mm-hmm. So you can meditatively do anything. Like when y'all do this podcast mm-hmm. and edit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. You might not know, but sometimes you might be in a state of meditation because okay. you're really aware of the present moment. You're not worried about nothing mm-hmm. behind you, nothing in the future. You're literally Really just in a present right moment now. and so um i learned about meditation because i really was just researching things to get out of the um the medical side of things like the western medical side of things mm-hmm. and i couldn't think of nothing else but to just sit with myself because i would get so much anxiety when i was by myself okay. like i was so codependent on my boyfriend and stuff you know mm-hmm. um if i was alone for more than five minutes then I would go into panic mode. Okay. And so I'm like, what is that or whatever? And then I started looking up um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, mm. uh, Deepak Chopra, and I was looking at what they were saying. And they were like, I mean, this man, Dr. Joe Dispenza, was literally able to uh, recover from a spinal in- injury mm. just from meditation. Okay. Like, just for viewing, just from viewing, like, okay, this is what... Um, the image of my spine looks like. Let me try to put it back together. Mm. Um, and that's what happened. Yeah. And so I kind of started studying it. I did go to school to become a certified meditation instructor. Mm. And they taught us so much, like so many different things about meditation. You could do a walking meditation. Um, one thing I incorporated, which got me into cooking even more, mm. was eating meditation. Okay. So. I was aware that food had energy Mm. um, even before I was a vegan. And so I would search up certain things. Like if I know I'm cooking spaghetti, I would be like, what's the spiritual meaning of a red pepper? Mm. And then I would think about that or like even just the health benefits of a red pepper. And I would think about that while I was eating and turn the TV off. Mm. And just I noticed how much better I felt after eating and stuff like that. And so that's what... That's where my uh, company was born. Like, and then it was pandemic time. Mm-hmm. We ain't had nothing else. To yeah, do for sure. Yeah, but research you know, exactly. Because yeah. so, when yeah. I think about meditation, I think about you know crossing your legs, crisscross applesauce. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lights off, mm-hmm. and you just zoning out. But that's the problem because you know a lot of people felt like, oh well, I don't have enough time to meditate. Um, when am I gonna be able to close my eyes and do do? And it was like. No, this can't just be some something for pop culture, which mm. is typically um, 
middle age white women who have time to be at home yeah. meditating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no. It it doesn't have to be like that. You can meditate while you're driving. You can meditate all these different um ways that I found that I was like, damn, like mm. I was meditating. I didn't realize yeah. it. You and know? when you say that, it makes so much sense because like me coaching, me doing the podcast, no matter what's going on, I'm not even thinking about it no more. Mm-hmm. Like that little hour and a half of coaching, like mm-hmm. you only your only thing you only thing you're thinking about is making your team better, making the players better. Mm-hmm. And the outside world is kinda like non-existent absolutely so when you say that that is true like because i don't think like man you gotta leave it outside yeah you know what i'm saying before and that's you even... a meditative state like even you know like i said eating um i noticed i started noticing it more when i was painting mm-hmm. and i would be like damn it's been four hours yeah for sure yeah time like, just went yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i'm like you know we gotta have some type of way to tap into this at all times mm-hmm. and once I learned that, I was like, damn. So everything mm. is everything can be meditation, no matter yeah. what you're doing. I mean, like, if you're smoking weed, that's why I incorporate uh, 420-friendly meditations. Mm. If you're uh, having sex, if you're watching TV, whatever it is that you're doing, you can do it meditatively so long as you're aware mm. at that present moment. And then just think about some observations, like what color is this? What does this smell like in here? You know, like all of that. Yeah. And yeah. How is it, how is your 420 classes? Like, like take me through one of your classes and stuff like that and that one spe- uh, specifically. Okay, so typically um, how it goes is everybody comes in. I typically have like some wine and just some snacks, some light snacks and stuff like that. Because mm. um, that's one thing I learned in meditation school was like, you know, if you super hungry or whatever, you mm. need to relax. Mm. Um, so we typically have like snacks, uh, wine and everybody just kind of come in get comfortable walk around a little bit maybe talk to each other if they know each other mm-hmm. um and then get in their spots so i typically have like the yoga mat out with the easel to paint everything so you don't have to worry about nothing okay um and then i kind of talk a little bit about what it is that we're doing what the meditation will be centered around today mm-hmm. and get everybody like loosened up and then we go into the guided meditation. So I do guided meditation. Okay. I write scripts for the meditation based off what I call it, what I feel called to uh, meditate about. Mm. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about just being silent and, oh, my brain, keep going. No, you just kind of use my voice as a... Um, as a roadmap to yeah, get like back tool, on track. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I give them blindfolds and everything, and either we lay down or we sit up. Mm. Um, I find that laying down is a little bit better just because some people have, like, slouching issues mm-hmm. or their back or whatever. After we meditate, um, oh, I'm sorry, right before we meditate and while everybody's talking and stuff, they'll smoke. Okay. So everybody smoke how they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's when we get into meditation. After the meditation... I ask everybody how they feel, um, and then everybody goes and gets their paint, mm-hmm. and they just paint, like, mm-hmm. whatever it is, even if it's you just want to paint a blue screen or a blue canvas, mm-hmm. like, whatever it is you want to paint, and while they're painting and while the music is going, I'm asking mindfulness questions yeah. to kind of keep you on track, so I'll ask, like, maybe... Uh, one question I ask almost all the time is like, if your abundance was um, right around the corner and was like, okay, pull up, come on, I'm coming to get you. Like we're about to, we're about to get this show on the road. Mm. What would be holding you up from walking off that door? Yeah. You know, to go get in the car with abundance. Yeah. You know, so I ask questions like that to really get people get like my race thinking. Me thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Hey, I might have to. I always wanted to try it because like, oh, like I said, I thought about meditation. Like I just thought like you guys would be quiet. Mm-hmm. And and you know what I'm saying just zone out and that's it. Like mm-hmm. no, but I tell them what I mean. I kind of teach what it's like to be in a meditative environment. Mm-hmm. You know, so you painting, you smoking, you maybe got your glass of wine, maybe you talking to the person next to you. But everything that we're doing is meditative. Yeah, so yeah, people yeah. Are like, dang, it's been an hour and a half already. Yeah, because we've been in this room and we've been focused on just everything in this room. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Now, what you you know cooking with, with the fire as vegan is that something that's kind of taken away from your whole classes and, and teaching absolutely, and stuff like that absolutely yeah. Yeah. which i mean in a perfect world i would be able to which i will get to but mm-hmm. in a perfect world i would be doing my meditations on the weekends cooking monday through friday and kind of coexisting with them both for sure um however me- the meditation classes take a lot of energy mm-hmm. um i have to be in a meditative state already mm-hmm. and 
I'm not, I am, but in a different way. So mm. I'm in like go mode when it comes to if I as vegan. Mm. Um, when it comes to my meditation business, like I like to be relaxed. I like to be uh, real chill, like almost talking softer all the time, you know. So mm. I'm learning how to incorporate that within myself mm. and with two businesses. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. It gotta, it gotta be hard. To, it's, it's hard to balance out, you know, saying mm -hmm. multiple things. Like, I know how it is being a parent, being mm -hmm. a husband, being a coach, doing a show, going mm -hmm. to work. Like, yeah, you gotta make time. And, but also, you gotta make time for yourself, too, though. Absolutely. That's and the most I'm important thing. I'm definitely learning that. When I first started, I used to be telling Fatima, like, you gotta take time for yourself <laughs> and all of this stuff. And she like, uh-huh, yeah, okay, you gonna see. Yeah. And so now I'm like, okay, it's definitely another job to mm -hmm. make sure I take time for myself. No, but for it's sure. still equally important. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cause you yeah. look up after you did all that hard work, you now nah, it's time to go to bed. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it become a routine that you ain't really like taking care of yourself. You ain't you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Well, what's something that you learned about yourself that you feel like you need to change to take you to another level? Um, that I project onto people what I would do. Oh yes. Yeah. So yeah, I expect highly of people because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And then would later resent people for not doing Acting accordingly. Yeah, yeah, like you know, I feel like I'm a I'm a real nigga, so to speak. <laughs> so I feel like if you not being one, then I'm like resentful. I'm like, what's wrong with you? And boo boo. But really, that person been showing me who they is the exactly. whole That's, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their true self. Yeah, yeah. I think we do that in relationships too. We try to get our mate to like act accordingly, like how we want them to act. Like mm -hmm. if I met you in this certain environment. This is how you are, but I'm trying mm -hmm. to take you up out of that. Absolutely. And it, it, vice versa, like a lot of women think they could change men, men think they could change women, mm -hmm. but hey, this is me. I mean, of course, we're going to grow together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's different. We're going to grow together and become better, a better version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we want somebody to act like, a court, like, hey, I want you to be like this. Mm -hmm. Even though I know I met you, you was doing. You know, saying lack of a better word, whole shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now yeah. I want you to be this whole, you know, saying wholesome girl, you know, like yeah. that. So it's like. I learned that in therapy. It's like. My therapist would tell me, you know, it's selfish. Mm -hmm. When I was healing a relationship with my dad, and my therapist would be like, it's selfish for you to disregard who somebody shows you that they are because yeah. you want them to be like how you expect them to be. Exactly. You know, and it's also delusional. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> delusion is good to some extent. You know, when it comes to manifesting and stuff yeah. like that, um, and seeing your way out of out of really traumatizing situations. But mm -hmm. when it comes to like everyday life, like you can't, you yeah. you can't. And so I I've saved myself a lot of um, heartbreak in this past year by just accepting people yeah, and you expecting got to. them to be yeah. who they showed me they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yep, yep. And then if they change up, then hey, thank yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Hey, man, I'm glad I picked you as the last guest of the year. Shit, like this is a good conversation. Like, you know, what I'm saying you want that last one to be good, like mm -hmm. going to the next year and stuff. You already told me I'm about to have a nice year because I had a dream about a cat. Yeah. So now, <laughs> so now I'm happy about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when the last time you cried, but it can't be for uh, like that didn't have anything to do with death. Okay. The last time I cried, the team was gonna laugh. <laughs> she oh laughed already. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I cried was over something stupid. What's up? I thought that. Oh my god! I don't. Let me just even. Okay, I cried because I was being so extra, whatever. With like, I just kind of was being heavy-handed in a rush for like a week at a time, whatever. Mm -hmm. And my key had broke yeah. to my car. Okay. And <laughs> so I like I. I tried to like fix it or like just like put it back in there or whatever, but it wasn't working. And then so I just took it out like mm -hmm. out of the fob. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to start my car and it wasn't starting. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh my God, my car not starting, my key broke, like my life is falling apart. Boo boo. Yeah. It really wasn't. And so, um, actually, I had went and called because I'm like, okay, I'm stuck at home. My, my car won't start, whatever. Mm -hmm. I had searched on AutoZone. I'm like, okay, let me see if they got the key fob. Yeah. And then I'm like, my battery's probably dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I'm about to fix this. Like, I'm about to do this. I even sent Fatima like a little meme of uh, Jerome from Martin, <laughs> the maintenance man. I'm like, I'm about to go out here. I'm about to kill it. And it was raining and everything, but I'm like, I don't yeah. care. So I called me an Uber. Mm. I'm like, okay, I'm about to go to AutoZone, get all the parts that I need to fix yeah. my car. Get it together. <laughs> So I went, the Uber driver was super, super cool. Mm. Shout out to him. I think his name was Muhammad. Mm. Um, I went and he waited for me outside or whatever. Okay. And so I went in there. I grabbed like a... I think it was like three hundred fifty dollar engine starter. Yeah. I grabbed a whole new key thing that needed to be reprogrammed, and it was like a hundred dollars. 
And then I got back in the car, and my Uber driver looking at me like, what are you, like, you okay? You yeah. know, he like, I work on cars and stuff, yeah, too. Sure. something wrong with your car? So I told him, and he was like, I told him, like, you know, my, my key not, I mean, my car not starting, whatever, and I showed him my key and two yeah. pieces. He was like, all right, come on, we about to go back here. I, I'm pretty sure I know why your car not starting. Yeah. He put the key into the fob and, like, held it together. yeah. And then he started the car. <laughs> you bought four hundred dollars. Yeah, and I, I spent like almost five hundred dollars. And so I'm looking at him like he like first of all your key your car won't start because your key has to be connected to like the chip and yeah, the thing. Yeah. And I didn't know that, so I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm about to take you to Target. He turned his little lift thing off and was like, I'm about to go. To, yeah. Let's let's go to Target get you some super glue. The super glue was like two dollars. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like. I, I'm like hoping it worked, but I'm also like I know I ain't just spent five hundred dollars yeah, for a two dollar problem, bro. Like, yeah. but but mind you, right before all the AutoZone and stuff, I was in my I was in my car crying. Yeah. I'm like, why is this happening to me? Like, I, I really thought the world was over. So we go get the super glue. He put the super glue in the thing and like put it in his air vent and let it dry. Mm -hmm. And Lo and behold, we get back. My car starting, Boom. everything cool, and I'm just looking at the stupid uh, autos on receipt, and yeah. I'm just like, what the heck? And then it started like snowing real bad, yeah. so it wasn't even safe to go like back to autos on or nothing. Need to cry some more. Yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. So yeah. I'm like, see, Man. but yeah. but I mean, what's funny is I cry over stuff like that, mm -hmm. but when it's something more extreme, Serious? I'm so calm. Yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. just like, okay, it is what it is. You yeah. know, boo woo woo. Yeah, like yeah. Man. So that was that was the last time I cried. Over she became a, she became a mechanic and spent about five hundred dollars. Literally, and I thought I was so <laughs> sweet. I'm like, I can do this by myself. Like yeah. I'm a big girl, you know. For I ain't sure. caught nobody. Yeah, no. Man, that's funny. Well, goddamn, shout out to Muhammad, man. Because uh, he could have he could just took you back and just kept it going. Like, yeah, man. You asked me to do a job, I didn't know. He he really <laughs> looked out. Yeah. Heck yeah. What was the uh, worst advice and best advice you received, like business wise? Just life was like just some advice you re you remember that like that was terrible or that was like great. Mm. Best res best advice I received was just to huh, essentially the words like fuck them. Like mm -hmm. you know if they don't if they don't get who you are or mm -hmm. what you're about what you're doing then it is what it is. If you don't have any negative intentions behind it, then, mm -hmm. you know, so I would say that's the best overall advice because that applies to business, that applies to relationships, that applies to everything, for mm -hmm. real. No, for sure. Um, worst advice, I would say lack thereof. So, meaning, like, if I'm talking to somebody and they just, like, whatever, mm -hmm. like, okay you yeah. know like kind of not seeing nothing because mm -hmm. i'm the type of person where i can kind of learn from anything um even if it's quote-unquote negative advice i don't think i've received any actual negative advice but i think that somebody just enabling my behavior mm -hmm. and just being like yeah that's crazy like yeah. i would do the same thing <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. i think that's more detrimental than yeah actually not trying to actually give you yeah. some advice but just condoning the bull crap. exactly knowing that i'm being self-destructive yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you know what yeah do that shit right yeah like i'll pull up on her right now too if i was you like, exactly yeah. yeah 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 something that you wanted to be that you never told anyone that i wanted to be yeah like like that you never told anyone like i wanted to be a tap dancer growing up you did? Yeah, bad, like real bad. Like, did you ever like nope, try? No, nope. my mom had my mom had the money for tap lessons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'd be in the kitchen with my little church shoes and trying to tap. Hilarious. Like, I wanted to be a tap dancer. I wanted to play a piano. Mm hmm I just I thought that was like cold, like sweet playing piano. That was that was my two things. Like and low key I wanted to be a wrestler, low key though. A wrestler? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I think I think you should still try to do some of those things. I do a piano. I don't I ain't got no rhythm to be tap dancing. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I don't want to wrestle. I don't want. <laughs> so, okay. But no, I for sure try to play piano though. Um, I would say a DJ. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever told anybody that besides one person. But mm -hmm. I really, really, really wanted to be a DJ at for one sure. point. I um downloaded this app and I was paying for it. Yeah. And I would just like add the songs on there and I was DJing. And I really still think I might. I say you could do that. it at your at one of the Fire Ass Vegans events. No, like. for real. I think <laughs> I think I will. Like I, I really did want to be a DJ. Um, DJs. All the DJs that I've met, mm -hmm. kind of cool. Um, 
I love music mm. and I love like different mixes. I know you've been seeing like on Instagram and stuff. Like yeah. that's what's popping yep, the yep, little yep. smash ups. Yeah. What was your rap name back in the day? What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you see when you say what I already know what's name. Give it to me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, best podcast in the city, you know. <laughs> Give it to me. My rap name was Dodie. Dodie. <laughs> Why that name? That's crazy. Um <laughs> Dodie in the building. Um <laughs> My dad used to call me Dodie. Okay. He still do. That's, that's, what's up. Yeah, that's yeah. my nickname for, for sure. my for my dad. But then like when I was smoking a lot and stuff, we would say like smoking Dodie. And yeah. I think that's in a couple like rap songs that they say it. So for like sure. that was my that was yeah. my name. Give me a, give me eight bars that you remember that you wrote. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I know you remember it. Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> uh this is so embarrassing. <laughs> You ain't got to it. I know you. I know you remember. I know you remember four. I can't remember. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> okay, go. I can't fuck with negative energy. Wait. Yeah, I'm Dodie. <laughs> Something like um. <laughs> my bitch come from the Philippines, and all we do is meditate. So now she really feeling me. Five bucks on chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah. Don't bother me about the little things. I only fuck with private jets. No COVID shit. They sick of me. Hell yeah. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> when we get that EP, fire ass vegan EP. That's that's enough. <laughs> would would that be something that you would, uh like hand try to just you know some on the bucket list that you like want to do? Um. God bet you when you smoke, you probably be rapping. Yeah. <laughs> See, I know it. I bet. I knew it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but now, again, I don't smoke as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I'll still be, like, freestyling or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would, but that's why it's under a whole different mm. name. Now I got to change my name because you didn't expose me. <laughs> but, like, I would do it under a whole different name, whole different persona. Yeah. Like, I would, I always said I would put, like, on a, a mask or something. <laughs> yeah. Just be like... <laughs> Like, yeah. Q thought beat on though. I say like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you sing? Mm -mm. Okay, okay, okay. No. Okay. Yeah, you gave me you gave me a little rapper vibes and stuff like you know what I'm saying. That's like hilarious. A little young Dodie in the building. I was cool this whole time. And now I feel like <laughs> nervous and exposed. That's no, all good. They're making make fun, man. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Now, uh, real quick, could you you know you talk you you, know, you got mom and dad in life and stuff like that. Like, just give me a quick breakdown of how it was for you growing up, like. You probably from the west side. Yeah. Why yeah. you say that? I'm, I just. Uh, okay. For some reason, everybody invited on the show is from the west. I'm from the east. I just stay west now. Oh, okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? But just talk about growing up on the west side for Dodie and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> right, I ain't going to talk you at the moment. I talk about me. I don't know who that is. All right. Deja from the west side. <laughs> talk about how, who was in the household and stuff like that. Like. Um. So, I grew up. My dad pretty much raised us for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, my dad had primary custody of me and my brother. Mm -hmm. Um. Growing up was a lot of moving around. Mm. I think that's partly why I'm like very impulsive and I I can't get too comfortable. Mm. Um, my mom she dealt with a lot of mental health illness, so okay. she was in and out of the hospitals. Mm. Um, she didn't have much uh, as far as financially, but we still like going over there and kind of cheering her up and stuff. For sure, yeah. Um, but staying with my dad was it was difficult. Mm. I don't think he really understood how to raise a daughter, uh -huh. especially yeah. like they had me young. So mm -hmm. he was still growing up. We was with my grandparents a lot, um, uncles and aunties. And um, my brother, he was born when I was seven. And then right after that is when my parents uh, kind of, I think, yeah, divorced. They okay. were married. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like raising him a yeah. lot. Like my dad has a commercial cleaning company mm -hmm. and I remember we would go to the buildings with him and I would have to like stay in the closet or something with my yeah, brother. Yeah, no, for sure. like, some movie stuff. Yeah. no, literally like, cause he was a baby. So yeah. I had to make sure he wasn't crying. For sure. Um, making sure he get to her from school, helping him with homework, cooking, cleaning, like really had to grow up. Yeah. Pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty quick. Um, my dad was a big kid like we did have fun but also mm. we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of stuff when i started getting older i, I was 
really rebellious and being like whatever mm. i started smoking weed and i started being like i'm gonna do what i want because i felt like okay i gotta work yeah gotta pay my own phone bill yeah i'm gonna take care of my brother i gotta cook clean yeah. when i get home For sure, i'm gonna do what i want yes yeah, so i was like shit i need a blunt too <laughs> like you know mm. <laughs> um so yeah that's kind of how it was but like like i said going over my mom's house it was very it was cool but it was really um it was hard because mm. I see my mom a lot of times really, really depressed. Mm. Um, everybody over on my mom's side was kind of like funny acting. Mm. Um, my mom didn't have a lot of money, so sometimes we would have to have money to make sure we all ate. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that's how it was. I don't, I don't feel like it was too hard for yeah. me or nothing. It for just sure. was very different from what i see yeah. my peers going through. i feel like kids that grow up like that like it just make them better adults anyway yeah like because they kind of had say. to grow or i mean it could hurt you in the long run but for the most part people i know include myself like it just help you grow quick and you already like once you face hardship once you get older you already then kind of dealt with that at a young age even though yeah. you wasn't supposed to but you know how it is and what it looked like to deal with you know what I'm saying pain or lost or just like not having it all and stuff like that yeah i mean um before i started going to therapy and stuff it it definitely was detrimental because mm. I was very impulsive. I wasn't the biggest communicator about how I felt. I would mm. just lash out. Um, I was addicted to like Xanax for mm. uh, probably about a year. Mm. Um, and I just was kind of promiscuous. Like I was just yeah. doing whatever. Like I was, I definitely always say like I used to live like a rock star because I really Wait, did. I feel like you need to write a book. <laughs> like, I, I feel will. Like, like I feel like it's like people need to know your story or whatever like that'd be, yeah. you know that's, what I'm I mean that's why I started fuck generational curses because I wanted to show like what it looks like to fuck generational curses like mm -hmm. it's not all oh yeah I meditate and da, da, da. like that's one part one side of things but mm -hmm. the other side of things is like sometimes I lash out sometimes I don't understand what's going on and I just want to fucking rant about it and mm -hmm. You know, be not. I'm not always the best person to be around, which mm. is why I started like isolating myself sometimes. You know, but yeah. I think it. I think it provides character. Everything For that sure. we go through provides character. No, fast, fast, yeah. fast, fast. If you had to tell someone about yourself using a song or an album only, what would it be? Like you press play, you ain't gotta say anything. But this song or this album is gonna tell you everything you need to know about me. It could be like periods of your life. It could be present day, like, you know what I'm saying? But it's going to tell me something about you. Um. Ooh. Um. Can it be a mixtape? Yep. Nicki Minaj. Um. <laughs> I think it's the Be Me Up Scotty mixtape. Okay. Where she had her autobiography on there. She had, like, um, that song Envy on there. Mm. I think that really captures, like, all the different... Mm. Seasons of my life For sure yeah. Now you said that Last night I had hit you And said what's well, the album That you really enjoyed I like to do this thing Where the last album You enjoyed I like to take a couple Of tracks And turn them to stories Okay So on pre Pink Friday 2 She picked Nicki Minaj I'm quite sure She's a Nicki Minaj fan mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. On track 5 It's Falling For You What's Like What make you fall For a guy What are some things That make you fall For a guy I would say Authenticity Like mm -hmm. That's so, so, so attractive to me. Like, mm -hmm. just being yourself. Like, not trying to be cool. Not trying to be, like, licking your lips every two seconds. <laughs> like, OJ, that boy, like. For real. Like. Yeah, what's up, girl? Yeah. <laughs> like, if I can sense that you, you know, like, you being some type of way in front of your homeboys to look like, you know, mm -hmm. some type of way. I, that's, no. I like, I really like authenticity and mm -hmm. sense of humor. No, for sure. Like, for I sure. love to laugh. So, Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Track six, let me calm down. When the last time you had to calm yourself down from something? Uh, that time I just told y'all about <laughs> my key. <laughs> That's I had to calm myself down yeah. and get it together. R and B. What's the, who 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 some what's a R and B artist or album that like this is gonna set the mood sh like right? Like you and your dude, y'all chilling and he pressed play and this the person like who is that person for you? Mm, the person Mm -hmm. I would say is Tory Lanez or Jacquees. Jacquees, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Now I got cussed out uh, pretty bad, not bad, but I got cussed out yesterday because I made. It, I don't know how deep are you into R and B music, but I said that R Kelly's the goat, mm -hmm. but he don't have one album that's better 
than Usher's Confessions. Mm. I don't care what you say. I don't care. I said it, and I mean I stand on that. <laughs> okay, well I'm not gonna call R. Kelly a goat, but I mean, we're we not supposed to say it, but you okay. know. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't take away from what he did. But yeah. anyways, um, no, Usher's Confessions. It probably one of the, one of the best R B albums ever, dog. That and um Mariah Carey's Emancipation. Yeah, yeah, they're both done by Jermaine Dupree. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. All right, track twelve, Shuka. Big difference. What's the big difference between Deja at eighteen to Deja now? Big difference is mm, my temper. Mm-hmm. And I would also say the thing, the fact that I don't take stuff personal no more. For sure, for yeah. sure, for sure, for sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Blessings. What's been a blessing for you, you know what I'm saying, throughout these, you know, your adult life? Mm, my tribe. The mm -hmm. people that I meet that are like myself. Mm -hmm. Or that appreciate who I am, even if they were not alike. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just the memories. What's something that you think about like, damn, like, those some good times. Because a lot of times, you, I don't know if y'all can relate, but a lot of times you think more of your past than your present. Mm -hmm. You think When you think about good times, it's never like what's going on right now. It's always like 10 years ago when grandma was cooking or when I was with family. Like It's always like happy times always equate to the past. It's never like we can't create those same memories from the past today for some reason. Or mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just me. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, I ain't going to lie, I feel like life just keep getting better and better. Mm -hmm. So like... I don't know. I've been surprised. I feel like that's because I probably went through a lot of trauma early on. So that could mm -hmm. be that. But I will say, um, again, 2016, 2017. Yeah, it was the best times. Ah, yeah. I lived life like. To the fullest. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> care if I died the next day. Like, For sure. Yeah, yeah. You was living. You was mm -hmm. living. Now, fast forward to uh, <laughs> Fire Ass Vegan. We ain't touched on so much stuff. Like We ain't touched on the, the cooking part a little bit with Erica Badu. Mm -hmm. and I, I need to hug Erica. <laughs> <laughs> but just talk about fire ass vegan and what made you like just start it like from jump i was very reluctant to start mm -hmm. fire ass vegan if we're being honest um i really just was cook i became a um a vegan in 2021 mm -hmm. and then i just started cooking on social media a little bit but i was cooking for my roommates at the time in arizona mm -hmm. and so then we moved back and to michigan um and i was going to do a cookbook because mm -hmm. i'm like I learned more about benefits of vegan diet and stuff like that. And I'm like, I want people to want to go vegan, um, but I'm pretty sure they need to know how to cook. Vegan. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah. Um, So I was testing out recipes on people. Like, mm. I'm like, how this taste? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did you know it was vegan? Boo, boo. And then people start asking me to cook. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, that costs money, you know, <laughs> so you're going to have to pay me. People was paying me to cook. I had a, a friend at the time who... I was talking really big to me uh, or about me to Fatima mm -hmm. and was like, yeah, I got this friend who's a chef and blah, 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 which I, I didn't consider myself a chef. Yeah, for but, sure. You just cooking up some good stuff. Yeah. And so she was like, well, why don't you come do a pop up? Because I had did the um, soul food egg rolls, mm -hmm. um, which is funny because one time I was just high and I really wanted <laughs> some mac and cheese and yams. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't feel like making this whole soul food thing. So I just put it in the egg roll and it slapped. Mm. Um, so I did a pop up at their re grant opening at mm. Fresh Roots re grant opening, and I'm pretty sure it was a hit. Like I'm pretty sure everybody mm. liked it and stuff, and probably was asking like when I would be back. Yeah. And slowly but surely, it just turned into okay. I'm fire ass vegan. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Now I just talk about because I know vegan is plant based. You know, what I'm saying and vegetarian is still like you still you know what I'm saying got like Jesus dairy products and, dairy, and stuff yeah. like that. Talk about the difference between the two and what makes, like, being vegetarian still is harmful to your body. And, and you know what I'm saying? With you being a vegan, like, what's the difference between the two? And what's, what's, why is it better to go vegan than being a vegetarian? Um, well, I will say the main difference for me. I know there are a lot of people who care about, okay, well, are them shoes vegan? Are them nails vegan? I'm not mm. all into that right yeah, now. For sure. Yeah, for yeah. Um, I just, I just think about, like, the the gains that you get from it from um consuming plant-based food right mm -hmm. so the difference between vegan and vegetarian is the the fact that you do consume some dairy mm -hmm. and like i told you um dairy was the first thing that had to go yeah, for yeah, me yeah, 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 yeah. actually so 
I, I'd easy. say the the benefit of it is no dairy. Mm-hmm. Like dairy is like hormone concentrated. When you think of milk, we get milk from a pregnant cow. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> why a cow? I don't yeah. think if I'm gonna drink some milk from an animal, it's probably gonna be like a cheetah or a dolphin, something like yeah. smart and for sure. But um, and then cheese is just like molded milk. Mm-hmm. So it's like Damn. you don't really need to be consuming that. But, you know, do as you please. Mm. Vegan is more of like, um, yeah, the absence of animal products. Mm. There are some, like myself, who like to concentrate on with the benefits of what you're getting. So, like, my chicken shawarma egg roll, it's not just some uh, veggie chicken that I found at the grocery store. Yeah. I use mushrooms. Mushrooms are really, really good for energy, brain health, um, immune system, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, being more intentional with it. So, the more you go deeper into veganism, you'll have the levels. People mm. who eat the impossible meat and stuff all the time. And then people who, quite frankly, don't even cook their fruits and yeah. vegetables. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, are you, like, worried about the stuff that you, your intake just because of your body? Like, you know what I'm saying? You want to make sure your body is taking in the right stuff. Because you think about your body like a car. You don't want to put no bullshit gas in there. Right. You want to put the right stuff in your car. You want to put the right stuff in your body. Right. So, right. are you thinking about that, like, when you become a vegan just to have a healthier lifestyle and take care of your body and just, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um... You know, I say brain health for sure, mm. energy, and the ability to, if you do, because there are still people who are vegan who get sick, who mm. get cancer, whatever, um, but the ability to fight that, mm. you yeah, know, yeah, um, sure. to have the, yeah, to have the ingredients and nutrients that you need um, to fight anything, whether mm. it be depression and all of that stuff. It's like a, a way of looking at things more of, on the Eastern medicine side mm-hmm. of things, yeah. What was the hardest thing to give up? Ice cream. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> ice cream. But I found some really, really, really great ice cream options. When I was um, first turning vegan, I found um, Ben & Jerry's, which I don't support no more because they mm-hmm. support genocide. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I first started, they was like, it was like this um, flavor called Seven Layer Coconut. Mm-hmm. And they have like chocolate chips in there. <laughs> All good stuff in the world. Uh, walnuts, caramel, graham cracker crust, and it was made with almond milk, um, ice cream. Mm-hmm. That junk tastes <laughs> better than any ice cream I ever had in my life. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. What do you say to the ones that be like, man, okay, you you vegan, vegetarian, but it just it costs too much to live that lifestyle. I say do your research. Mm-hmm. Um. And stop being lazy and go to some good stores Mm -hmm. because really it's not that expensive depending on what you're getting. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting your, um, like if you're getting your ingredients from certain like the walnuts and Mm -hmm. even like the way Fresh Roots do stuff, like she orders fresh produce like every single day. Mm -hmm. And think about if you were to go to like Walmart and all that stuff, you're going to be spending so much more money than you just go to like a local, you know, farm or produce. Now, I want to eat healthy, but like lack of healthy stores that's in my area. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What 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 do you? How do you feel about that? Like, just there's no stores around for us to just go and hit up. Like, how we can go to a gas station? We can mm-hmm. go to these. You know what I'm saying? These places to get the fucked up bullshit foods. Mm-hmm. But those healthy stores are so far away. Well, what I will say is, um, I don't know all of the names to them, but there are a lot of projects um, developing right now where Mm. there's community farms Mm. and community gardens um, that's growing produce and stuff like that. However, if you do get some time to go to get some seeds and plant your own stuff, like Mm. it's actually much easier than we realize. And I I honestly recommend that more than anything. Mm. Start to learn how to grow your own stuff. Um, If you're... Paying attention to the economy and the world and stuff, we really not about to have no choice anyway. Yeah, no, for sure. So for sure. I definitely recommend that. But yeah, just do some research. Just a lot of people around who are starting, um, or at least in this area, mm. that's starting like community gardens and stuff where you can get fresh produce. What's your go-to meal when you, you know, saying you and your, 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 your you know, saying your mate ain't really seen out of <laughs> my go-to meal. Your go-to meal, yeah. Well, I make me a smoothie bowl. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, yeah. and then they gonna have to figure it out. Mm. Yeah, I say smoothie bowl, mm. smoothie bowl or salad, mm. because a salad I know I can get everything that I need in that meal mm. with a salad. But a smoothie bowl is like a treat slash mm. it filled me up. Okay. Yeah. Now, parents who are vegan, 
they have kids. Mm-hmm. Should they introduce their kids to the lifestyle that they're already in of rip, or should they let them grow up and just figure out on their own? Like, what do you say to parents out here with kids? And say, you know, what I'm saying like, bring them up. You know that that with with you know they lifestyle that they are living right now. I mean, I recommend mm-hmm. having them be vegan because of what I know about the products that's out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, cause yeah, I've met some people that's like, oh, I've been vegan all my life, so I could eat meat. But mm-hmm. for what, you know, I recommend having your kids be vegan. They mm-hmm. get more nutrients like that anyway. They're mm-hmm. growing, so why not put growing food in mm-hmm. them? You know. Advice to someone starting their vegan lifestyle because my brother, he a type of person that when he starts something, he feel like, all right, this is how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And he always, hey man, stop eating, stop eating this, stop doing this, stop mm-hmm. doing that. Like man, okay, bro, if I want, if I'm gonna make the switch, let me make the switch. Right. Don't pressure me. Right. He want to pressure like do this. Like stop having your kids eating ramen noodles. Like. Yeah. And I used to be the same way. I had to like chill out a little bit because I was starting to become one of them people that's like. You know, every time I would talk to my mom or something, she like, yeah, I'm about to make me chicken salad. I'm like, chicken? Yeah, what like, you making chicken for? You don't need... And it's like, okay. I don't even want to talk to you about food Yeah, no more. literally. <laughs> now I don't even want to talk to you no more. But um, I would say if you're starting off, definitely have some compassion for yourself. And don't feel like you got to jump into, okay, salads all the time, this or that. You have to learn nutrition. You have to learn what your body needs. So mm-hmm. before you cut everything out, just start implementing more plants. Mm-hmm. Like... So maybe still have like a little half of your chicken breast, whatever, and make sure you get it, what they say, organic or whatever, and Mm -hmm. then have a big salad. Eat your salad first. You'll be full by the time you get to your chicken. Mm -hmm. And then you start to crave more fruits and vegetables the more you do that anyway. Okay. Yeah. Talk about the location where you are, where you at, as far as like, what's the vibe like inside? Like, just, just talk to me. Okay, so um, right now we are in Midtown. However, mm-hmm. there's another location coming soon. Um, mm-hmm. It's we're gonna be in Rochester, right mm-hmm. across from Rochester High School and mm-hmm. down the street from Oakland University. Mm-hmm. So, um, but right now our Midtown location is it's a vibe, like it's real cozy in there. Mm-hmm. We always joke that it feels like um, I think. I think the show is Cheers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It feels like sure. that in there because we know our customers. Yeah, like, like, what up, Craig? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, literally, <laughs> sure. like, we know exactly what they're going to get. Um, mm-hmm. We do obviously get new people in every day, but even when they come mm-hmm. in, we treat everybody like family. Um, we essentially, like, I don't know. It's just we created a vibe in there mm. that is just like anybody can walk in. You don't have to know about health and all For that sure. stuff. We'll, we'll tell you. Sure. Or if you have some information you can give us, we open to learn. Mm. Um, it's very playful in there. We joke with each other and be like, nah, what what you got on today? Like, yeah, why yeah. you got that on? You know, yeah. like, you look silly or whatever. Like, we all just real playful in there um, from the employees to the owners. Mm. Like, we in there, you know, a lot of times you'll catch Fatima in there most of the time, but less than less than normal but when you catch us in there mm. like it's always a vibe like we always having fun now, how many, especially sunday i'm sorry you I'm sorry. okay now you i know you and fatima but how many people are you know working there how many employees are there, are there with you guys um currently there are five employees. okay okay yeah. now i got an idea because i want to take this podcast to the next level next year okay next year let's do a show at y'all spot uh, but absolutely. let's do it while you preparing Okay. Are you cooking? Is that okay? That's amazing. Well, we should do it at the Rochester location because that okay. one would be three times the size for sure. of this one. For sure. Yeah. I'm thinking that we can be in there and the whole show could be about, you know, saying what you're doing as far as like the cooking stuff and, you know, saying who, what you, who you caring for or whatever, how, you know, yeah. saying how, how you go about your day when you come in there and preparing food and stuff like that. Okay. One rule. It had to be on a Sunday <laughs> because okay. Sunday is game days. Okay? okay. So we be in there playing Uno. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fatima just got to up in Uno okay. this past weekend. <laughs> 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 so like we play uno we play mm. jenga we play like some trivia games and stuff yeah. and you know it get it get a little serious yeah. but it's all in funny so games think, and I stuff i think it's dope you down with it that be dope yeah it's, i just want to make sure you know make this show big yeah this show. no okay. it's going to be big for, sure, for yeah. sure hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah what's some of the mistakes that people make when they become a vegan like things that they don't eliminate and they thinking like i'm vegan but you really like still fucking up um i would say I know you said the whole dairy thing. Yeah, chips. Mm. So, like, just snacks, period. You know, thinking that something is vegan because you like, well, it's just chocolate. Or they just potato chips, mm. but you're not reading the ingredients and, like, the seasonings and stuff they use. Even, mm. like, um, I had learned that imitation, 
vanilla flavoring, mm-hmm. yeah. it's actually beaver booty juice. <laughs> oh. I'm so serious. <laughs> It's the oh, you say imitation vanilla. Imitation vanilla. Okay. So if anything got imitation vanilla flavoring, you eating beaver booty you juice. You eating beaver booty juice. Like how do you even like you looked that up or something? Like how do you find that out? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was I think I was looking up like what's something that yeah. you think is vegan that's not Duh. because I was learning about the whole natural flavorings and stuff because. Some a lot of natural flavorings be like bug juice and yeah. all that type of stuff. So when I Duh. learned that they use the term to be professional, they yeah. use the term. Um, <laughs> I think this sounds worse, but uh, anal secretions. Yeah. <laughs> so that's beaver booty juice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well we learned something new today. <laughs> don't you don't be eating that booty juice. Like. <laughs> We've been eating booty juice for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Now, um, when it's, all, when it's all said and done, like, this ain't the end, but, like, how do you want to be remembered? Like, with your, with what you're doing? Like, how do you, how, how do, how should we remember De- Deja? Um, I want to be remembered as somebody who didn't just take life as it came to them. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody who created the life that I wanted to live and wanted to see mm-hmm. for myself and for other people. For sure. What yeah. you want to see Fire Ass Vegan like short term and long term? Short term I want to see Fire Ass Vegan be um like a household name. Mm-hmm. Almost actually short term I want to see it become like a a shop where you gotta you gotta come in. You come to Detroit, you gotta, gotta check go out Fire yeah. Ass Vegan. Like you gotta check out Fresh Roots. You gotta check out the scenery. Mm-hmm. Um, long term, I want it to be almost like the positive version of Coca Cola. I guess mm. I want to be behind so many different um, projects as far as transforming mm-hmm. our food and all of that stuff to be more conscious and stuff mm. like that. So. I want to have multiple products in like the grocery stores and then like even your favorite restaurants and stuff. They like, oh, we got the fire ass vegan this or fire ass vegan that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now I do this thing called making a making a band. Okay. You remember making a band, don't you? Mm-hmm. All right. Now I know, you know, Duty, Duty, right? That's the rap name. No, but yeah. Well, well, how you say it? How you say it? Doty. Doty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. My, my my wife called my my, my son Duty. Okay. <laughs> Doty. So okay. if you was making an album, hypothetically, you and four other people. On your dream album, who would that be? Who would, who would it be on the album? It could be singers, it could be rappers, it could be producers, it could be all rappers, but you and four other people making this album. Well, I'm gonna say just because she think it's funny, Fatima, definitely J Rock Blue. Y'all gotta check him out. J Rock Blue. Yep, he's okay. from he's, the city. Okay, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get with him then. Um, and then two more. Wiz Khalifa. Okay. I like the old Wiz. Me too. Yeah, Me too. Cushion old Orange Wiz. Wiz. Yeah. So yeah, Cushion Orange Wiz. That was my jam. Good times, um, good times. And you said four or five. We got one more person. So it's you, okay. Fatima, Young. Uh, what's J Rock Blue? J Rock Blue, Wiz Khalifa, and who's that? Last but not least. Last but not least, I'd have to say Dom Kennedy. Dom. Oh yeah. She hip dog. Like That's you, you, you a real one. Yeah. You, Dom Kennedy made some good music. Now I know. If you listen to Dom Kennedy, you got to listen to Larry June. I haven't. Oh, my God. But let me say, the only reason I haven't is because I felt like, and I'm a very emotional person. I felt like before we got a, well, by the time we got a Larry June, Mm -hmm. I'm like, but y'all didn't even fully appreciate Dom. They didn't. Dom Kennedy is hard. Shout out to my brother, Classic Pothead. He put me hip to Dom Kennedy. Y'all, you know about Dom? Dom Kennedy hard. And he write a lot of stuff that you don't know about. Like, him and Wilson ain't work uh, together a lot. Uh, What's my man named Dog? Goddamn, the nigga who be uh making all the uh who produced Nas last three albums, uh Hit Boy. Hit Boy. Hit Boy. Okay. So him and Hit. Oh yeah. Work okay. together a lot. Like okay. they he behind the scenes on a lot of stuff. But damn, you a real one for knowing about Dom. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't too many people like not, too many guys don't even know about Dom Ken. I love Dom, and that's my favorite song. But yeah, yeah I yeah. love Dom. But Larry June. Yeah. He giving Dom a rough as my. Larry the man, like okay, like Larry June. I. I, it, was, it was so bad. Like, once I first discovered Larry June, I went back and listened to everything. Mm-hmm. And every project is hard. Really? Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Larry June. And he worked with hell of a lot. Like, you know what I'm okay. saying? He from I'm going to stop being so so sensitive. So you want those people, those fans, like, you don't want to turn your back? Like It's not even that I didn't <laughs> want to turn my back. I'm just like, I don't know. I just feel like, dang, like, mm-hmm. y'all, y'all always so quick. Because we live in this no, fast we are. food we society. Are. And it's yeah. like, 
you like somebody, then somebody else come out sounding like them. Not saying he copied or anything, but somebody mm. uh, sounds similar, and then you on to yeah. them. You no, know, for sure. So. Damn. Now, I, now I go home, I listen to some Dom Kenny mm-hmm. on the way home. That was my dog, man. <laughs> now, towards the end, we got these little games we play. Okay. Uh, one of them is too early, too late, or right on time. Okay. I tell you something. You tell me if you if it was too early for you, too late, or right on time. Okay. All right. Figuring out life. Did you figure out life too early, too late, or right on time? Mm. Right on time. All right. Sex. Did you have sex too early, too late, or right on time? Right on time. All right. Moving out your parents' house. Too, too early. early. Too early? Mm-hmm. You feel like you should have stayed a little longer? I mean, if they... If they had no shots, but if they really? had a house for me to stay at, yeah, for then sure. I would have, I would have stayed. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel, you, I feel you. First relationship, too early, too late, or right on time. Right on time. First job, too early, too late, or right on time. <laughs> too early, I was bad. Yeah, <laughs> leaving a messed up relationship, too early, too late, or right on time. Right on time. All right, find out Santa Claus wasn't real. Too early, too late, or right on time? Not early enough. Too late. <laughs> All right, starting fire as vegan. Too early, too late, or right on time? Right on time. Okay. Now I got this thing called what's worse. I give you two things, you tell me which one is worse. Okay. Having to shit out a bowling ball or having to piss out a ping pong? Excuse me, what? What's worse? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say the bowling ball just because, as a woman, I gotta give birth, so yeah. I would imagine I can do that before I can do the other one. <laughs> that was a funny one. <laughs> What's worse, your kids catching you having sex or you catching your parents having sex? My kids catching me having sex. All right. What's worse, having to wear a week old pair of drawers or a week old pair of socks? Oh, a week old What's pair of drawers for sure. That's all right. Worse. What's worse, getting caught by your parents masturbating <laughs> or getting caught by your parents masturbating? It, I mean, I mean, I mean, getting caught by your parents masturbating or getting caught by your partner? Oh, parents for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. What's worse, in the relationship saying somebody gonna kill themselves or are they saying they gonna kill you? <laughs> Um, <laughs> kill that so okay. that's worse. <laughs> What's worse, your man come extra quick? I'm talking three pumps and and out, or he can't get up at all. Uh, three pumps. That's worse. That's frustrating. I don't know girls get mad about that. Case. You know, oh, I ain't good enough. I mean, you know? I can I can do what I gotta do, but For sure. three pumps is like now we gotta scrap. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> but wait, 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 hey, girl, it's you. It was just you. No, that's not. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Like I said, everything is all this stuff is just jokes and funny. Yeah. Titties with no nipples or nipples with no titties. Which one's worse? <laughs> <laughs> uh, titties with no nipples worse. All right. What's worse, being a tall nigga with short arms, or being a short dude with long legs? So I just this part little, but the legs long. Um, <laughs> a long dude with short arms. That's worse. I he can't even so. hug you, put his arm around your shoulder. Yeah, nothing. like that's weird. <laughs> <T-Rex>. Yeah. <laughs> What's worse, no car, nice crib, or nice car, no crib? No crib and nice car is worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's worse. Yeah, yeah, you can get on that bus. What's worse, getting uh, dying from getting shot or dying from getting stabbed? Dying from getting stabbed. Yeah, yeah, that's multiple boys. <laughs> What's worse, somebody talking through a movie or somebody telling you the ending? Mm, oh my god, talking through a movie, and I'm gonna say that yeah, because I hate, my, oh my, god, my boyfriend, though. like, I love him so much, but he talked through a movie. Yeah, you know, I'd be like, would you shut <laughs> up? Yeah, yeah, bro. I hate that junk. I hate that junk. What's worse, not having money on Christmas for your kids or not having money for on a birthday? Not having money on their birthday. I'm surprised people say that. Yeah, because Christmas is. But you got. But see, Christmas is almost like competition. So when your kids go back to school and the kids like, hey, I got this, I got that, and like, I got nothing. First of all, that's why I want to homeschool my kids. Okay. But, um, I say birthday because you're celebrating your life. Like fuck mm-hmm. Santa Claus, you <laughs> celebrating you. You know. Yeah. All right. Now this one is is funny. What's worse, losing your man to your home girl? Or losing your man to your ex. Oh. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I know. Lose my man to my ex, like. Yeah, that's a like, dang. That's, that's how you gonna do me? Like, no, for real. What's worse, finding out your parents aren't your real parents, or finding out your finding out your siblings are adopted. <laughs> Finding out my siblings is adopted will be worse. And I'm going to tell you something funny real quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one time I thought this man was my dad. Like, I know my dad. Yeah, yeah for sure. But. but, like, I was mad at my dad. And so this guy who used to date my mom was mm -hmm. like, you look just like me. Like, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You probably is my dad. Because this nigga tripping, like, talking about yeah. my real dad. Yeah. We did a whole... Um, we DNA did, job? Yes, DNA. I was going... He was introducing me to his mom like, yeah. this your granddaughter? It was weird. So Dog Ray, so Dog's Ray believed that you might be his daughter, huh? <laughs> yeah. We, we kind of looked alike. Like, he was light-skinned. He had light eyes. Like, my real dad, he dark-skinned. And yeah. we still look alike. But this dude looked like he could be yeah. my, my dad. For sure, dad. That's yeah. What if what, what you would found out that was your dad? Like, how would you have felt then? At the time, <laughs> I would have been... Happy because I was mad at my dad, so yeah. I would have been like, "That's why you're not even my dad. Why you even <laughs> being irritated?" <laughs> but um, but like, nah, long term, yeah. nah, I love my dad for, for sure, sure, for sure. Yeah. What's worse, failing at something or not starting? Not starting. All right, I got two more. What's worse, you find out your mate cheat on you through text or in action? Mm. I would say, uh, in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. you're gonna kill everybody. Yeah, all right. Last one, what's worse, break up in person or break up over text? In person, okay, all right. Don't be no coward, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, hey, this was a great interview. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the conversation. I have fun when your podcast coming back. It's 2024 coming up, like, yeah, let's let's shoot for summer 2024. You're coming back, huh? Yeah. How, what do your podcast consist of? Is it like, is it you? Is it other people? It's some episodes are solo mm -hmm. and me just ranting. And then majority of the episodes are me like having conversations like how we are now. Mm -hmm. I don't do too much research about them, but we just have a conversation about who they are and mm -hmm. how they break in generational curses. For yeah. sure. For sure. For sure. You want to give anybody some positive advice or whatever, you know, saying going through something, they need some words of, you know, saying wisdom. Um, sure. Like if you doing whatever makes you happy and it's not hurting nobody, keep doing it and you'll find your tribe mm -hmm. sooner or later. And how can you find the, the business? How can you find y'all Instagram? And um, I'm on Instagram at fire vegan with two ends. Mm -hmm. Um, also fuck generational curses, but that's F dot C K generational curses. Mm -hmm. Um, I am in Midtown inside of fresh roots, mm -hmm. 97 West Warren F. Midtown Detroit and yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's where you can yeah. find me. Yeah. Now I, I got this thing I, I stole from uh, All the Smoke podcast. Shout out to Stevie Jackson, Matt Barnes. If you want, if you could see anybody on this podcast, who would it be? But you gotta help me get that person. Uh, like somebody that I know. Yep, somebody that you want to see on this podcast. Uh, J Rock Blue. J Rock Blue, mm -hmm. I bet we gotta go. Yeah, that was twice, twice. So we gotta get you on. Mm -hmm. Gotta get you on. He got fire music. Huh? I'm trusting you. Fire music. And you he cool. He model all that. Yeah. Okay, for sure, for sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, like I said, man, this episode one eighty two, eighty three, eighty three. I'm sorry. If you're watching this, make sure you subscribe, you like, you comment, you review, you share it, all that good stuff, man. This is the best podcast in the city. Ain't no competition. If it is, I don't see that shit. Fire as <laughs> vegan. We out. We out.